Hi, welcome. My name is Matthew Hilton. And welcome, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> and this is our New Year's video. Because last year I played a lot of video games. Like, a lot of video games. Right here on this channel. And I thought, because of how many I played, I actually thought about this months ago, that I'd rank the games I've beaten. Not the ones I've played, the ones I've beaten decisively this year. Not just ones I've played, meaning any playthrough that hasn't been completed yet, I cannot rank. Meaning Skate 3, GTA 3, um, Five Nights at Freddy's, Street Fighter 6 World Tour. It has to be games that I completed, whether it be story modes, towers, arcades, you name it. That's what we're here to do today. So, as you see, we got five tiers. We got amazing, we got good, we got okay, bad, and straight doo-doo. That is the lowest tier we are going to go. And I'm going to judge it not by how the views went. I'm not going to judge it by like anything else. I'm just going to judge it by if I enjoyed playing it or not. Okay? So, without further ado, let's get in touch with our very first game. Which is right over there. Mortal Kombat 2011. I completed the story. I completed the story last year. So, like, not... 2023, 2022, I meant. I completed the story. So, I finished the Arcade Towers in 2023. Meaning, that's the version we're ranking. We're not ranking the story. We're ranking the Arcade Towers. So, I hope you're ready. Because Mortal Kombat 2011 is going in the good tier. Story-wise, it's one of my favorite games of all time, so you'd think I'd put it at amazing. You know what? I will put it at amazing. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 9, my favorite video game of all time. And my favorite Mortal Kombat game, favorite video game, you know, the whole nine yards. Mortal Kombat 2011 is going there. So... This was the towers, so... What do I think about the towers? They were amazing. There were some that were a bit iffy, but I enjoyed playing it because I love Mortal Kombat. I loved Mortal Kombat 9, and it's my favorite game of all time. All right. So that is that one. So what is the second game we will be looking at is none other than Rumble Roses. So Rumble Roses is a wrestling game with all women's wrestlers and the version I played was the story towers. The character stories, if you will. The character stories were great. The game is a great game. Every character is unique. It's a... Obviously, it's a game of culture. But it's a wrestling game. And a very good one. So I'm putting it at good. Rumble Rose is a very underrated wrestling game needs to be talked about way more so our next game we will talk about is x-men origins wolverine this game now here's the thing i have watched the movie and the movie would go right down to doo, -doo. <laughs> that's where the movie goes but what about the video game on the PS2? Put it right there. Because X-Men Origins Wolverine, the video game, was actually really fun. It had some great combat sequences. It had so much great stuff about it that you forget that it's based on the, a horrible movie. You think that after, if you played the game first and then went to watch the movie, You'd be sorely disappointed, but if you watched the movie first, like I did, and then you went to play the game, it's probably, it's going to exceed all expectations. The game is a really good game. That's what I'm saying. 
Next up, Iron Man VR. So I played this on the P PlayStation VR and despite the PlayStation controls, it is a good game. It is not fantastic or amazing. It's just good. So I can't put it any, I would not even consider putting it at amazing because it's just a good game. That's it. What was Iron Man VR? It was a VR game where you got to play as Iron Man. That's what it was. A game where you could play as Iron Man. That's pretty much it. It's an Iron Man game. It's a VR game. As a VR game, it's pretty good. As an Iron Man game, it's also pretty good. It's not amazing. It's just good. Our next game. WWE 2K23. I played the My Rise modes. I played both of them. And what do I think about it? It's okay. It's not the best wrestling game I've ever played. It's not... The... For oh, Jesus. In terms of a wrestling game, it's fine. It, but the stories are just okay. The My Rise modes are just okay. That's all they are. That's all they are. I will say this. One of the videos from the lock My Rise modes got no views, and that was when I did the British Rules match for some reason. It got no views. And I'm still pissed about that. Um... Yeah, this game was just fine. It's not amazing. It's not thrilling. WWE 2K23 is okay. It's just an okay game. Especially the My Rise modes. In terms of game, it's good. In terms of story, it's not that great. It's okay. Next game, Deadpool. It's amazing. It's amazing. I'm just putting Deadpool up there at amazing because it is, it really is amazing. Deadpool the video game is one of those games that needs to be talked about way more. And if you don't talk about it, you, you don't know what you're talking about then. Deadpool the video game is one of those games where it did the character justice before a movie could. Nolan North did perfect as Deadpool's voice. The story is great. It's your typical Deadpool basically hijacking the whole story. That's what the game is. Deadpool just hijacks the story the whole time and tries to make it his own. Because all he wants is a video game made about him. And when he gets it, he hijacks it. He doesn't follow the script like Deadpool wouldn't and tries to do everything himself and even goes over budget. So Deadpool, the video game is amazing. Next up, like remember, I judge game modes I'm not judging it as a whole game. Just by the game modes I played, AEW Fight Forever. <laughs> a game we were waiting for for so long, and as a game, it's good, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Road to the Elite. The Road to the Elite mode, the solo player I played, and it's bad. It, it, there's nothing in it. It's wait, it's too short. It took me six parts just to beat it. And by then I was like, that's it. AEW Fight Forever was probably one of the most disappointing wrestling games in terms of having a story mode, that being Road to the Elite. It was extremely disappointing and a big letdown. It was probably the game's biggest. It was its biggest weakness. It was its weakness. Road to the Elite was the biggest weakness of the game. It was not good. It was not fun. Especially toward the end when you had to play all those gauntlet matches. Which then made no sense because then you had to play one final gauntlet match to win. Or you had to play gauntlet matches. You had to play four ways. And you, I lost every single one of them. And that was it. Game sucks. Well... Road to the Elite sucks. The rest of the game's okay. This game. Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase. 
Kill them all. If you see my Let's Play on it, you know how I feel about this game. You know how I feel about this game if you see me play it. This game... This fucking game is bad. It is a bad game, and I will stand by that. Because this game, it's a... It's basically your Crash Bandicoot style. Like, you're go going up screen and all that. Then a problem arises. And that problem being the platforming in this game fucking sucks. The platforming is the worst part about this game. It is awful. The rest of the game could have been passable. I could have put it at okay. But the ice levels and the platforming in this game are its worst parts. That's the worst parts about it and it makes the game extremely unfun. It's playable, but it's not fun. I hate Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase on the PS1. The movie, I loved. I loved the movie, but I fucking hate the game. That's what I think about it. Next game. Mortal Kombat 1 Story Mode. Amazing. <laughs> I keep saying things are amazing, but that's because they are. It, they are amazing. Mortal Kombat 1 Story is really fucking good. It's really good. The story mode. I'm currently playing the arcade tower, so expect me to talk about this game again next year during 2024's game rankings. So expect me to talk about that. Um, Mortal Kombat 1's arcade. I'm not talking about that yet because I'm still playing it. The story mode, fucking fantastic. I love this game. And it's probably my second favorite Mortal Kombat game. That's how much I love this game. <laughs> anyway, next game. Terradrome Rise of the Boogeyman. A video game where you play as horror movie characters. A fighting game where you play as horror movie characters. It's a fan game. It's really good. It's very, very good. Actually, I might put it right here. That's how good this game is. Terradrome Rise of the Boogeyman is by far one of the best fan games, probably the best fan game I've ever played. And I've played some fan games in my time. And this is probably the best one I've ever played. Because you could tell a lot of love went to this. You can tell that the guy just wanted to make a fighting game, and he's making a sequel. It's not out yet. Well, the beta's out, but the whole normal game isn't out yet. <laughs> I have it on my computer, <laughs> but I'm not going to play it till it's finished. You know? Terradrome Rise of the Boogeyman. Some great stories. Now, the story, mo the story parts are just still images, but they have characters that you that aren't in the game. It references Pennywise and Warlock. And I thought that was pretty cool. It even has some horror movie characters I never heard of before, like fucking Tall Man from Phantasm and Pumpkinhead. To make me want to watch those movies too. So Terradrome Rise of the Boogeyman, in good tier. Next game. Nicktoon G Night. Oh man, this shit doo doo! This shit doo doo, bro! <laughs> Nicktoon G Night is doo doo! It, no, seriously, this game is so shit. It, like, the levels are too damn long. It feels unfinished. The sound effects are awful. It feels unfinished. The voice acting cuts in and out. They sometimes miss the hit detection in the cutscenes. <laughs> I can't stress this enough. Sometimes when they have like the little text bubbles where the characters would be talking to each other, sometimes they have voice acting, sometimes they don't. The game is shit. It's a where the fuck do I go? It's. <laughs> Jesus. That Crocker fucking boss battle is still in my head. I fucking hated that. That was so shit. I hate this game. I'm never playing it again. You can't make me. You can't make me.
<laughs> Next game. Battle for Volcano Island. It was okay. Battle for... I mean... There we go. Battle for Volcano Island was okay. It was okay. It, it's not amazing. It's not horrible. It's okay. In terms of the Nicktoons games I've played so far, best one. And the levels are way shorter. It feels finished. It controls well. It has a bunch of different characters besides just the normal four, Timmy, SpongeBob, Danny, and J Jimmy. So yeah. It's okay. Okay. Next game. The Punisher. A game that was banned in multiple countries. For the violence. And as a video game, it's now in my top five favorite video games I've ever played. The game is so much fun. The levels do get, it does get a bit difficult, but that's the joy of it. It gets a bit difficult. The joy of a game is when it gets difficult. And when this game gets difficult, it it's much fun. As you can just shoot people and they die. <laughs> You have a variety of weapons to choose from. Hell, you can pick weapons up. And you you can see, like, you can meet up with characters like Nick Fury, Black Widow, Iron Man. You could meet up with those characters. Garth Ennis did a great job writing this game. And I desperately want another Punisher game just like this. It is fantastic. It is, again... In my top five favorite video games of all time. It controls really well. Okay, next game. Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. It's okay. It's okay. I played the arcade town. I played the arcade mode because that's all it has. That's all the single player All-Star Brawl has. That's it. The only thing it has. And it's just only okay. And then again, the arcade modes aren't that fun. So. I'm just going to put it out okay. You know, I'll put it behind 2K23. That's where it's going. Obviously, the best are all the way at the sides like it's okay from what I hear it's sequel is way better and god I hope so because I really want to play it final game we will be talking about Cartoon Network Punch Time Explosion literally on the final day of 2023 I completed Cartoon Network Punch Time Explosion on the PS3. What do I think about it? It's fine. I'll put it right here. <laughs> put it right there. It's okay. Cartoon Network Punch Time Explosion. I played the story mode, meaning when I get to the t arcade, I'm going to have to talk about the game again. The game's okay. The story's okay. Nothing much to it. You don't hear the characters voice with each other you don't hear them talking with each other which I am sad about since the whole point of a crossover in my opinion is I want to hear the characters talk to each other but overall it's an okay game it's not the greatest Super Smash Bros clone it's only okay I grew up with more Cartoon Network stuff as well. So I grew up with most of these characters. But even then, the game's only okay. Anyway, that will be it for this video. That was me ranking every single video game I played in 2023. Well, every game I completed in 2023. With the worst being 
Nicktoons Unite, and the best being Mortal Kombat 2011, or otherwise known as Mortal Kombat 9. But if it's a game I solely played in 2023 and didn't start in 2022, it'd be The Punisher. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and me talking about all these games. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe for more, tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Hope you guys are ready for all the games we're going to play this year. I have quite a few up my sleeve. I'll see you next time. See ya!